This is a video of me building a kitchen island. I hope you enjoy the video. 62 to the origin here, foot this way, and then two feet here, here, and here. So after marking out on the floor with tape where I want the island, I went to our local hardware and plywood store and got maple for the face frames and maple plywood for the carcasses. I bought this before all the storages so you can see the price is pretty low. It wouldn't be the same now. Based on the taped mock-up earlier, I made a plywood top that I'm going to use for a template for the rest of the build. I'm going to direct measure the island off of this so it needs to be really accurate. I put it down in its final location just to see if it looked right in the room and to get my boss, the wife's, final approval. The plywood template is the countertop. So I measured one inch in on all edges to show the edge of the island. And then I measured in another three quarters of an inch. You can see the, the cross marks. And that's the inside edge of the island. From the inside marked edges of the template, I am cutting out the bottom of the cabinet. And here you can see what the cabinet's gonna look like versus the countertop. That inset is like a bar, like a section where people could sit. Now I'm cutting out parts of the sides of the cabinet. This edge is cut at 22 and a half degrees, so I had to do some handsaw work. And because I'm not a master of using a handsaw, I had to do a little cleanup work with the chisel. I'm putting the cabinet together mostly with pocket screws. I know some people think you're gonna lose your first barn child if you use pocket screws, but this is pretty standard for cabinet work. This steel block you'll see me use multiple times in the project. It's one of my favorite tools. So now I'm gonna attach the bottom to the sides of the cabinet. I'm just doing it upside down. This seemed to work out better. I was feeling good. Things seemed to actually be working okay. Yes! This is the underside of the island. Uh, you'll see none of these pocket hole screws, but this is where all the sides attach. Gotta cut some angles on the table saw and this digital angle gauge is pretty handy. And just attaching other sections of the sides of the cabinet. I did this shot with a drone and it's crazy how much wind the uh, blades make inside a building. Checking the back for square. It's a little bit wobbly. Um, I added some top bracing. It's not shown in the video, but it definitely helped. Here I'm screwing in one of the underneath parts of the sides. Now I'm drilling holes for shelf pins. I've had this pretty cheap template for about 15 years, and it's always done what I need to. When you move the template up, you use an alignment pin to align with one of the existing holes. Plywood sides are done. Now I've started working on the face frame. This is the face frame that goes in the uh, front section, and it's got to be at an angle. Here I'm cutting the rails for the front face frame. A little bit of sanding before assembly and then some pocket holes in the rails to attach them to the styles of the face frame. A little glue in the joint kind of increases the strength but it also acts as a, as a wood filler. Clamping the joints together on a plywood surface ensures that they stay flat on the same plane. So now, so now I'm going to see for the first time if this face frame fits in the space it's supposed to. And luckily, it actually does. This is going to be painted, so a little glue in the joints and then I'm going to sand it and the glue will suck up some sawdust and fill in any minor cracks. Now I mark off where the face frame goes so I can make sure to put glue underneath that line. Then I'm clamping it down um, with a couple different kind of clamps and I'm using some weights to uh, basically gravity clamp it. And where it's successful with the drill, I pocket screw it. I really hope you're enjoying the video so far. Please comment, 
please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please subscribe. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks. Here I'm gluing up some edge banding on some shelves that go in the cabinet. These are some cheapo spring clamps with a bicycle tube attached to them. The inner tube keeps the edge banding aligned and the correct pressure on it while the glue dries. Because I made an error in my design, uh, art of the sides had to be one inch thick. So I used some solid lumber and glue it up into a uh, thicker piece and then plane it down to one inch. There I was showing how there was a section of the wood that had a dip in it, and then we'll see after it goes to the joiner one round, how that dip is a lot smaller. I searched Facebook and Craigslist several times a week looking for a bigger joiner. I haven't found the one I'm looking for yet. Now that the glue up is dried, I'm running it through the planer so it's one inch thick and then cutting a 45 degree bevel. The steel block makes its third appearance in this project. I wanted the island to have a trim detail that matches the existing cabinet doors. So I'm resawing some maple and I'll turn it into like a panel detail on the sides of the cabinet. I'm doing some planning work and I have no idea how this dog can sleep. It is so loud. I'm writing a code detail on quarter inch solid wood and doing a little bit of light sanding before I install the frame. That nailer is a 22 gauge pin nailer and it is a really cool tool. I highly recommend you getting one. I'm gluing the trim on. Uh, the nailer just holds it in the right spot until the glue dries. Here's a walk around the kitchen island. It's mostly complete. I uh, just need some doors and a little bit of touch up work and start painting. How you doing, Sadie? How you doing? Merry Christmas, Sadie. Merry Christmas, Bullet. Bullet should not be eating sawdust. It was pretty sad editing this video, uh, this part of it, because my Weimar winner you saw there, he died um, after finishing this project, and it was sad seeing him on the video. the primer and the wood filler I'm using for this project. I thinned the primer about 10%, ran it through a strainer, and now I'm spraying it. I would say I'm a decent finisher, uh, I'm no expert. If you need an expert on how to spray paint, I think you should probably go to a different video. Now I've started building the doors. I'm cutting the grooves for the center panel. If you cut one side and flip it around and cut from the other side, you're ensured that the groove is perfectly centered. This is a quarter inch brass setup block and I'm using it to ensure that quarter inch fits exactly in the groove. Now that all the parts have groove cut in them, I'm going to cut everything to the correct length. And I'm using the same setup block to, to check to see if my blade is a quarter of an inch above my crosscut sled. And I'm going to cut tenons in the rails of the doors that fit in the grooves of the styles. The tenon takes at least two cuts. This is what I think is called the cheek cut. And now I'm cutting from a perpendicular direction to cut the rest of the tenon waist off. And I'm checking to see if the tenon fits in the grooves of the styles part of the door. All the solid parts of the doors are all machined up and just ready for the uh, panels. My wonderful assistant is giving me a hand breaking down the MDF. 
After the panels are cut to the right dimension, I'm going to use a router to cut a rabbit in the edges of all the panels. It's a pretty big bit, so a couple of passes is required. Quick tip, you can cut just a little bit off the board by shoving it against the blade and then starting it and running the blade across it. Since my panels are MDF and I'm not worried about wood movement, I'm going to glue the panels in. I'm gluing these doors up on my table saw tabletop because it's the one surface that I know is dead flat. Kind of checking everything over and apply a little bit of clamping tension and then knock all the parts so that they're perfectly flush. The rabbit I had cut was just slightly not the right size, so I was using these spring clamps and boards to make sure that the front of the panel was glued up in the right plane. Say hello. Hello. What would you like people to do? Celebrate New Year's. What would you like people to do for the channel? <laughs> for the channel? Yeah. Watch and subscribe. Thanks. One more inspection, just checking for any wayward glue. Good joinery pretty much ensures that things end up square, but I was checking the diagonals on all the doors just to make sure, and luckily I didn't have to adjust anything. It ended up being square without it. Good night, doors. One of the doors ended up being glued up just slightly off on one end, so I'm just trimming it off the table saw and a crosscut sled. I apologize, but all of the installation video just vanished. I don't know where it went. So here you go, here's the final product. Don't tell my wife that we have in empty cabinets because she'll go and buy some stuff to put in there. This is a pop-out trash can drawer. Um, I've got lots of video for this and an upcoming video will be how to make a trash can drawer, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching the video on how I built my kitchen island. Take care, God bless, have a great day. Thank you for watching. It's hard to beat the beauty of a Texas December sunset. Thanks again for watching. Take care.